chasing the police every single day. I'm so glad they got that video working. I was afraid I was going to have to tell Senator Scott he had a really strong neck. It looked really great up there. Well, thanks for inviting me. This is really such an honor. I am. I was last here when I was seeking this position and asking you to take a chance on me. I was not in politics at the time, having been a prosecutor and a judge and hoping to be your attorney general. And so thank you very much for giving me this great opportunity. I actually lived in the Tampa Bay area and moved to Tallahassee. Moved my entire family to Tallahassee, Florida, to Young County. And that included packing up a nine-year-old, a son that was going into the Army, who since uh, went to Fort Drum, and a husband who is in law enforcement. He is with me tonight. Justin, please stand up and say hello. He always gets embarrassed. He's the reason I am the Attorney General today. But he was uh, reading the newspaper as we all do. Yes, we still read an actual physical newspaper in the morning. He's trying to get adjusted to our new city. And I'll tell you, we've done a lot to adjust, trying to get our nine-year-old used to the new place. We did what every responsible parent would do if you traumatically uproot your third grader. We bought him a puppy. We called the puppy Gil Puppy. But we were also reading the paper one morning. And when I say read the paper, you know what this is like if you have a person in public safety as a spouse. It means they're reading the paper and complaining to you the whole time about what they're reading. So I'm listening to him and he said, I can't believe I'm reading this. And I said, what are you talking about? He said, there's, a, there's an elected official here and they were trying to build a police station in a new area in the county. And the elected official said that we could not do that. They could not do that. That would be unacceptable because it would be like an invading force. An invading force. It should not surprise you that that county is the highest county in crime in the state for the fifth year in a row. I compare that to this great county who's meeting here tonight to celebrate public safety officers. And this circuit, the 20th circuit, as I just confirmed with the state attorney tonight, has the lowest crime rate in the state. So thank you. Because everybody's in there. Yeah. <laughs> Very good. It means a lot. That's a good point. I forgot. Because all of you did here that we are celebrating to take an oath. You know, 244 years ago, members of the Continental Army took an oath. They declared that the 13 colonies were free, independent, and sovereign, and they stood up for the so rule of law. Our fate would not be governed by one person, one dictator. They would not determine our fate, but that we would under a rule of law. And today, some of our nation's greatest heroes, like you, still don uniforms and still take oaths to protect us. And I believe it takes someone of special character to do that. To take an oath and be the person that stands between safety and harm, goodness and darkness. You are the protectors of our streets. You are the bulwarks against chaos. You are the steadfast guardians of our safety and the rule of law. You are indeed, many of you are often referred to as the thin blue line. And you have probably heard that phrase too often these days, but many, I suspect, don't know the origin. During 1854, a British regiment was battling against a Russian cavalry charge, and the British regiment wore red uniforms. And so they earned the nickname, the Thin Red Line. And the phrase became so commonly associated with battlefield heroism that it was featured in a poem by Rudyard Kipling. And in that point, a soldier named Tommy contrasts the good treatment he receives from countrymen during wartime with the poor treatment that he receives during peacetime. It is easy to mock the uniforms that guard you while you sleep, says Tommy. But when there's trouble in the wind, when the guns begin to shoot, folks cry out for the thin red line of heroes. And I suspect that Tommy's complaint about Sarah and her friends is all too familiar to many of you. Too familiar because too often, these days, it appears that many are quick to stand with some of you only when it's convenient. Yep. Too often, the uniform is respected only when there's trouble in the wind. And too often, our heroes are honored 
as I did this week in Broward County, only after they fall. But among the families of those who guard our streets, there is a special box. It is one I obviously share with your family. We have shared stories, experiences, and we are so proud, immeasurably proud, because when your family member wears a uniform, they accept a risk, and you accept the risk, and suffer the fear that they may not come home. I remember this all too clearly one night on the phone when I was told, I have to go, I almost got shot. Thankfully, that person is serving life in prison. Good riddance. But more powerful than fear, there is pride. Indescribable pride that your loved one renders service to your community and your country, and they are part of that long line of oath takers. So tonight I want you to know I am proud of all of you. But not just proud, I offer a promise to stand with you, shoulder to shoulder, as we battle some great epidemics in this world. Whether that is an opioid crisis that now takes 17 Floridian lives a day, and I know many of you in this room, paramedics, police officers, first responders, have saved lives. Whether that's human trafficking that is going on in our backyard, and I know many of you firsthand have suspected this, identified victims, and stopped it. A third of the nation and calls to the hotline for human trafficking. Human trafficking. And I stand with you and promise you that I will fight against another epidemic. One that we have to consistently push back against, and that's misinformation, assumptions, and disrespect of our first responders and law enforcement range. We have to push back when we hear about comments like invading force of a group of people who took an oath to put their lives on the line for that same group of people who disrespected them. It has evolved, evolved into a destructive undercurrent that eats away at the foundation of our society, a society that is built on law and order and on building blocks of trust that justice is blind and that all citizens are treated that justice is blind and that all citizens are treated fairly under our rule of law. And as Attorney General, I will loudly and often express my tremendous amount of faith and respect and gratitude for the brave, selfless acts that we do on a daily basis. My first month in office, we launched the Back the Blue campaign in an effort to highlight the incredible heroic acts of first responders. And we have given out awards since then to JSO officers that busted out a window, dragged a woman to safety 10 feet away from a car that exploded, and threw themselves on that civilian to take the shrapnel that came from that car. We awarded a Back the Blue Award to a trooper who, as he was talking to a civilian on the side of the road, saw a vehicle barreling towards them, and without hesitation, pushed the civilian out of the way, took the brunt, and got flown into the air. We need to highlight that. We need to remind everyone around us in our communities how amazing these people are that give their lives to this selfless service, this noble profession, and for such a little care. Alexander Hamilton said the first duty of society is justice. It is also the first duty of the Florida Attorney General. And I cannot look at, live up to that oath without you. And so, I thank you for giving me the privilege of serving you in this important way. I ask that we continuously ask ourselves how we can thank you, our first responders, and the women, men and women in public safety. How do we say thank you to those who guard our streets, who protect our children, who pledge their lives to preserve ours? We do so as Kipling's suggestion, not only when there's trouble in the wind, not only when the guns begin to shoot, but also when the media wails and controversy rages, when the right thing and the popular thing may not be the same. So tonight, for the brave men and women that we honor, it is my heartfelt promise to you that I have your back. While you are in the line of duty, fulfilling your oath, I will fulfill mine. 
and that is to defend the rule of law and to defend those of you who serve it. It was truly an honor to be here tonight back in your amazing county as your Attorney General. I appreciate your unwavering commitment to our public safety officers and I am proud to stand with you as we honor these noble professions and the honorees tonight. Thank you so much. Hey, Sheriff County, this is Sheriff County Cop Watch. I am using any video here with under fair use if you uh, have criticism, reporting, teaching, etc. And please donate. I do not make money from YouTube, and uh, there are different ways to donate in the uh, video links. Thanks.